Hi, Ryan. Hello, how are you? Good. Welcome aboard Bailey Airline, where you become a cockpit. <laughs> You've used that line a lot, <laughs> haven't you? Wait till you uh, hear what I have to say if I fuck up the landing. <laughs> like, ooh, that was a rough landing. It's not my fault, it's not your fault, it's the ass fault. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I bet that's not the only ass joke you have up here. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> All right, we got the alternator on and charging. We got that good. Turn on the vent so we get air. You would be an amazing commercial pilot. Why is that? You got that voice. <laughs> <laughs> what was the airport L? Uh, L1, wait, L53. All right, we'll see if it looks like it's in the right spot. Lodi Air Park, that's it. All right, we'll go direct. Yeah. All right, cool. we got that. Okay, we've got avionics on, we've got transponder on, squad one zero altitude. at one one. Visibility one zero, sky clear, temperature three four, dew point niner, altimeter two niner eight four, RNAV GPS from one on a right, approach in use, landing and departing runways, one on a right, one on a left, notice the airman, target localizer, out of service, taxiway Bravo, close, we normally one on a left, and taxiway Mike. Taxiway Charlie, close between runway 3 2 right and taxiway Bravo. That door. Multiple cranes, close it. the field, Hold it. 100 right like that. Okay. Have this weather is in effect for California and coastal waters. For further information, contact Hiawatha for flight service frequencies. Use caution for bars in the vicinity of Concord Airport. Devise an initial contact to have information. Alpha. Alright, we have Alpha. 073. Close enough. Concord information Alpha. Time 0153 Zulu. Wind 240 at 11. Visibility, one zero. Sky, clear. Temperature. All right, she's at Alpha, right? Yeah. Good. I'm making you the co-pilot, so everything we do, I'm going to have you verify. All right, so then we'll put in the uh, frequency for Lodi Air Park, which is 122.9. There's no weather there. We're going to have to look at the windsock like old days, but I'm pretty sure we're going to anticipate a landing on 2.5, okay. regardless. Um, is that called a squawk? The squawk is the transponder. Oh, gotcha. So we've got our tower frequency, our end frequency, then this is Travis Approach, that's our next frequency, the flight okay. following. We've got our ground frequency here and our weather frequency here, and since there's no frequencies other than 122.9 there, we don't have to set anything else. I see. Now, uh, keep holding on to the door while we taxi. Make sure you hold on to it tight, though, in case there's a gust of wind. I don't want that ripping off. You got it. The taxi down here. We'll let uh, ground. We went on a right, clear four touch and go. There's only one controller right now, it sounds like, because it's a slow Sunday night. So he's we're, we're on ground frequency, gotcha. but we can hear tower. So yeah. when you're on ground, you, you're not going to be able to hear the pilots talk on tower, but you can hear the controller talk on tower, I so see. you know he's busy. So this solid yellow line here with the dotted yellow line is called our movement, or uh, I forget what the fuck it's called, but it basically divides the movement from the non-movement area. Okay. So they control pass there. We can do whatever the fuck we want over here. Concord Ground, Cherokee 2863 Mike, Northwest Hangars, Alpha. Cherokee 2863 Mike, Concord Ground, runway 1 on a right, taxi via Juliet, Hotel, and Echo, cross runway 32 left and runway 32 right. 1 9 right via Juliet, Hotel, Echo, cross 32 left, cross 32 right, 63 Mike. Clear right, clear left. Since we're using one niner, we uh, we will ask for a left. Uh, this will be a crosswind departure. We'll go across the back of Mount Diablo, or a left downwind with a right turnout. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Go left downwind. He might give us a right downwind because there's a runway to the left of us. So we'll just see what it looks like. There's the plane coming in to land. He's going to land on the runway. We're going to taxi to. Oh wow. our run-up area, so we're going to appear and do a ground check of the engine and the instruments. Okay. More redundancy with the safety. Exactly. Side. Yeah. And you can't exactly, like, pull over to the side of the road if uh, the engine sounds funny in an airplane, so we make sure that all that shit 
looks good before you go. Gotcha. It's like your uh, second chance. <laughs> exactly. Your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we make the uh, parking brakes on. We make sure the trim is set for takeoff, which it looks like it's pretty close. Uh, primer is in and locked. Fuel pump is off. Uh, mixture is set full rich. Throttle goes up to 2,000 RPM. As the enunciator panel is on, we uh, turn the magnetos off one by one. Check those. So it should go down 100 RPM, two to the left. Correct. She go back two to the right. She go back to two thousand. Go one to the left, down a hundred. Okay. And one to the right, up a hundred. Should be no more than hundred fifty drop. No more than fifty difference between them. Carb heat on, slight drop. Carb heat off, slight rise. The amp meter charging. Got fuel in both tanks. Oil temp is in the green. Fuel pressure is in the green. Oil pressure is in the green. Gotcha. Got our uh, run up check complete. Bring it back down to idle. Then the next thing we do is test the uh, flight controls. We make sure those are free and correct. So we go all the way over here, all the way back, all the way back, and all the way forward. And I make sure all the flight controls are responding the way they are. Yeah, they're supposed to, and they are. All right, so final check before we take off instruments. Uh, we're going to also switch to tower and monitor that. Um, soon it sounds like there's only that one plane in the pattern. And then um, instruments. 171, 171, that's good. A departure brief, we're going to take off on this runway here, which is 19 or right. We're going to ask for a left downwind, if he'll give it to us. Um, if not, we'll do right downwind, then cross. We'll basically follow the Delta down over the Antioch Bridge direct to the airport. If we're on the runway and something happens uh, before or in the process of taking off, we'll abort the takeoff. If we've already taken off and we can still land, we will. If we've already taken off and we're below 700 feet and something goes wrong and we have no more runway to land, we'll try to find a spot to land that's safe straight ahead, which is going to be that nice golf course. Um, if we are above 700 feet and something goes wrong, there's a rabbit over there, it looks like. Uh, yep. Uh, grass right there. You can see his two little ears sticking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see them. Um, if there is uh, something wrong above 700 feet, we'll try to make a U-turn and get back to the airport. Um, so that's our departure brief. Doors, windows latched. Pull it tight. There you go. Down. Then lock to the top. Good. No air between. No light. All right. Um, apps are set for takeoff. Fuel pump is on. Selector is on the right. And good to go. So we'll ask for permission to take off. Concord Tower, Cherokee 2863 Mike at 19 or right, left downwind if possible, if not right downwind. Cherokee 2863 Mike, Concord Tower, runway 19 right, clear for takeoff, your left downwind departure is approved. 19 right, clear for takeoff with a left downwind, 63 Mike. And we make sure our short and far final are clear, just because I don't trust them a lot. That's, uh, that's really amazing, all that radio traffic, you know. Yeah, it's not that much. It seems confusing, but I know that you get used to it. Yeah, the system. All right, center line. Bring our throttle slowly up. We make sure our airspeed is alive, which it is. We've got a little bit of a right crosswind, so we correct for that with the right aileron. And for 65 knots, we're right about there. We're light today, so she wants to fly. And we're off. This is so cool, dude. We're going to climb out at 79-ish, and then um, once we hit 700 feet for noise abatement, we can make our left crosswind turn. Totally see why you love this. Oh, it's, I geek out, dude. It's the best. The one time I got to fly, I was well, totally like, wow, if I really could do this all the time, I would be all about it. You want to fly? I don't care. I'll have my hands on it, but you uh, can yeah. be tourist or you can fly. It's up to you. Well, bring, your, you bring, to your, bring your seat a little bit more forward. You okay. Don't use the yoke to pull yourself forward, though. <laughs> I use the handle on the side there. Pull yeah. up, pull up. 
All right, close enough. Yeah, that's good. Got left hand on your knee, right hand on the yoke, nice and relaxed. Just go like this, and then right. we're going to make a left turn. We're clear left. We'll guide you through it. Once we make the left, we're going to have a little bit of back pressure like that to keep it locked at the turn rate we want. Gotcha. If we let it go over there, it's going to continue to just roll us upside down. We don't okay. want it. All right, straighten out just a bit. Straight, straighten out, aim towards the mountain. Okay, that's our crosswind leg. We check again for traffic, make our left again. So do you have a China hat? When you threw on five kilos, single concord, try make straight in runway one nine or left for the two mile final. Straight in one nine or left, uh, report the uh, report the two mile final. All right, straighten out. Go towards the uh, mountain across the bay there, and we're climbing at a perfect rate here. Okay. We'll uh, set our heading to. For right now, we'll set our altitude to, we'll go 2,500. We're going to fly visually. I'll, I'll, I'll be a Nazi about everything else. You just enjoy the sights and, uh, and the uh, flight and flying. And if you don't want to fly, just tell me. Yeah, it's all good. Whatever makes you happy. When you pull back on the yoke, that's when you get lift, right? Correct. The, uh, back yeah. is up, forward is down. Gotcha. Left and right or left and right. And the pedals is just your, uh, it's like a... I'm right just a little bit. Aim towards the uh, Pittsburgh stacks right there. Okay. The smoke stacks. And when you make a turn, do you, how gradual of an angle do you usually... Oh, this is fine. Uh, okay. So see the wing... The turn coordinator here, and there's gotcha. little marks there. That's a coordinated turn. We went on a right taxi to Juliet Hotel and Echo Cross, runway three two left, and runway three two right. Basically, fly just to the right of those stacks over there. Okay. The trip, dude. All right, we're above a thousand. We're going to turn off the uh, fuel pump. Conquer Tower, twenty five seven second. Like to put one uh, nine right on request if possible. And push the nose down just a hair. There you go. Continue four nine left. Continuing one nine left. Right. Right. So right. Our temperature is green, green, green. RPMs are good. Everything's good. Uh, we're, what did you ask? What altitude? Is it 2500? We'll go to 2500. That's when That's you'll right. see the blue marker come into view. And this plane doesn't take much time to, to level off. So literally at like 2480, you can go and drop the nose just there. And, wow. And uh, it will level off. Short just a hair. There you go. When we uh, climb in route, we can climb at 90 knots, and that gives us a good forward speed. It brings the nose down so we can see better ahead of us, and it actually, we're still climbing at about 500 feet per minute. So that's how you're gauging it, is like our airspeed. Yeah, sure exactly, because when you're at full throttle, you control your speed by pitch. Because you can't control it with the throttle, you're at max throttle. So. Gotcha. All right, so we're going to level off right here, forward a little bit. Here we go, right at 2,500, see? Gotcha. And now we have the trim wheel, so let go of the controls real quick. I'm going to trim it. So right now we're kind of pushing forward to keep it down. Yeah. What I'm going to do is take away that control pressure by putting down the nose, and then I take away that force with the trim wheel. So now gotcha. see how it's pretty much staying yeah. right about there? It has a level flight. Control. Exactly. So now we'll pull back the throttle just a hair. We'll cruise. And we should be out of Concord's airspace. We are, so we'll change to Travis. Wow. And try to keep us somewhere in the realm of 25 so I don't drive the Travis guy nuts. Gotcha. And our, our uh, heading will be somewhere around there-ish. So that way basically head towards the left, left quarter of the Antioch Bridge there. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Travis approach, Cherokee 2863 Mike, flight following request. Three eight six three Mike Travis approach. Good evening, Travis Altimeter two nine or eight one. I didn't say request. Two nine or eight one. Just departed Concord and request flight following to Lima fifty three Lodi Air Park. Uh, cruise altitude two thousand five hundred. PA twenty eight slant golf. Six three Mike out of contact five miles northeast of the Concord Airport, and you said your destination is Lima fifty three. Affirmative. Lima five three six three Mike. Six 
three Mike, Squawk four five three three. Four five three three six three Mike. So when I was doing that uh, one flight I actually got to do, he was telling me about the China hat. I guess that's kind of like trimming the flaps too, isn't it? The China hat? Yeah. Oh, up on the, yeah, so yeah. he had an electric trim, I don't. <laughs> that's the difference. <laughs> that's it. Like, that was pretty cool. Let me know if you feel more pressure than you should one way or the other, we'll trim it up. It's going to change during flight a little bit, depending yeah. on what we're over. As soon as we go over the water, we'll probably change a little bit. What? And our purple line is what we're following, so if you get glance at that every once in a while, as long oh, okay. as we're parallel to it, it doesn't matter. We're just getting close, close Let's enough see. for government work. <laughs> you don't have to worry about any airspace between here and there. There's no other towered airports or no, nothing. It's just fucking Delta and farmland, pretty much. Gotcha. Oh, when I was a kid, I used to always download the uh, the flight simulators. Huh? Yeah, I used um, to play Microsoft all the time. Oh, God. I just never knew how to really get into it, you know? Number 3311 Romeo, contact NorCal approach on 125.25. You have a good night. What's your favorite uh, flight that's local for you? Number 2863, Mike, contact NorCal approach on 125.1. You have a good night. 125.1, you do the same, 63 Mike. And that's 6,000. A uh, favorite local flight is probably like Half Moon Bay because you can see all the sights of the Golden Gate and stuff. You land right outside the airport is uh, food and oceanfront dining and all that stuff. Gotcha. NorCal Approach, Cherokee 2863 Mike, 2500. Cherokee 2863 Mike, NorCal Approach, Dr. Altimeter, 29081. 29081, 63 Mike. Air 96 Uniform, Contact Approach, 127.4, good day. 274, good day. Do you think you're going to keep this plane forever, or are you going to... You know, it's a, it's a question that I people ask a lot, and I ask myself a lot, and I think about a lot, and honestly, I mean, this plane, the equipment in here is worth more than the plane as it sits, um, the airframe. So, that can be moved. I yeah. can put other stuff in there. This fits Garmin universally, so I can take this out, put it in a new plane, and slide into Garmin. Gotcha. A lot of the other planes come with an older Garmin, so it's kind of work, would work out good. Might have a few tinkering things, but for the most part, it would work. So that's the biggest thing. Uh, the other thing I love about this plane is that um, it's so economical to fly and own. The maintenance is very uh, limited on it. Um, when it does need maintenance, it's fairly reasonable to... It's airplane shit, so it's going to be expensive, but it's for, for the most part, it's reasonable. Um, but the biggest thing is like for my purpose, which is generally me and one other person doing a lunch flight or even a cross-country multi-state trip, so yeah. so it fits the bill. And that's my 80% of the time me. It will haul me and two other people in some basic bags um, in certain conditions, definitely not on a hot day like today. Uh, but in good weather conditions, it will, it will accomplish that too. But that's not a constant need or goal of mine. So if I was doing more longer flights where I needed to get there quicker, carry more weight, more people, I would probably want to upgrade quicker or buy into a bigger plane um, and have that at my disposal. But 90 plus percent of the flying that I do, this plane works perfect. I can still go over the ground at about 150 miles per hour. Right now we're doing about 150, 160 with the tailwind we have. What more do I need? We're getting to Lodi in 25 minutes or 20 minutes or something, you know? Yeah, regardless of traffic. Yeah, <laughs> and so even to Washington, to the islands, it's six hours, it's 16 to drive. It's probably an hour or two in a jet or something, but I obviously can't afford a jet, so I think it's a pretty fucking good compromise. Yeah. Overall, you know, so. What is like, I've always wondered, uh, when you set, I'm sure there's like air zones or whatever where you can fly freely and just kind of do what you want. We're in it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know how regulated things were, like... Do whatever the fuck we want. Oh, that's crazy. If you want to do some maneuvers here, we can do it. Yeah, okay. go ahead. I'll let you do All it. Right. All right, so we'll just do uh, turn around a point. 
we'll do it on your side, and we'll pick... Uh, let's see, we don't, yeah, no obstructions around here, so we're over Oakley now, so see those farmhouses there, we'll do it, we're a little high to do, like, reference maneuvers, okay. but, but we'll do what we can with it. Six three, Mike, just for your planning purposes, we'll be doing a little bit of sightseeing on the way. Yeah, November, uh, six three, Mike, right? just so he doesn't go, what are your intentions? <laughs> like with your daughter or what? <laughs> so, um, we'll slow down just a hair here, but like we can do a turn around a point. Well, I love that feeling. We shouldn't, you shouldn't really feel much of a, a pull because if you do the turn coordinated and keep your, your uh, distance through it, there shouldn't be a whole lot of G-force there, but we can see, put that wingtip basically right on that point Oh, I see what you're saying. And we're rotating around that point, okay. that little farmhouse, right? And yeah. we have to work with the uh, the weather conditions, too, with our wind. Is this where you use the pedals at all? I'm using them just a hair. Yeah. But for the most part, we're not. Okay. That's awesome, man. Have you ever had anybody who was like afraid of flying come up here and experience it differently? Yeah, oh yeah. People that that uh, don't know how to, you know, anything about it are always amazed when they come up. Here. So now we'll do a turnaround a point to the left. Two towers there, huh? Yeah, we can. Well, we're a little close to them, but okay, we'll gotcha. try. It's whatever. <laughs> Just winging it. No, no pun intended. <laughs> Most of the time you do turns around a point, you're about 800 to 1,000 feet above the ground. Yeah. Right now is appropriate because those are tall towers, but generally we're just a little bit closer, so you have more of a feel of reference to the ground. Now, if you look at the nose, our nose is pretty much staying level with the horizon, right? Yeah. That's what you, you want. You, it's, all, it's all visual, so you can look at your altitude, and it, so we're pretty much stuck on 1640 right now, so that's yeah. good. But we also kind of go back and forth between the two, and you can see our turn Our turn is about 60 yeah, degrees here. Three zero four seventeen. Oh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, 5304 Nortel approach, runway 30 transition, expect the ILS or visual approach, Oakland altimeter 299. Turn back out. The other thing you can do is slow flight where we dump, dump a lot of, uh, not going to do it today just because it's yeah. hella fucking hot out and we do have to climb back out of it, but uh, something that we could do is bring back the power to 1500, pull all three levels of uh, notches of flaps, and you can do what's called a simulated emergency descent. Basically, we just rock a wing over and we go, <laughs> and you, you'd think it, it feels like crazy or whatever, and that you wouldn't, uh, your stomach would drop and all that, but really it doesn't. It, it's It's kind of weird it's just uh you just lose a thousand feet really quick you know oh, wow. basically and then whenever you're done losing altitude you just rock the wings back level and you just level out there's not even that many g-forces it's pretty cool but on a cooler day we'll watch we'll you go out and do some like maneuvers and stuff oh this is so cool dude but wonder she doesn't leave you <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Not for IFR use. Okay. I mean, an iPhone's not a... Not as, it's not a uh, certified instrument. So these are certified. I can use those for IFR. Gotcha. Uh, iPad, iPhone, anything that's pretty much not installed or not certified, you can't. Yeah. You can fly again if you'd like. Yeah, sure, I'll take it. Get up to 2,500. Yeah, that's fine. I could see how you have to keep track of, like, you know, so many different things. And you always wonder, like, how do you know you're climbing at the right rate? How do you know this? How do you know that? It's figured out. You, you, it's time and experience. So the plane has various speeds. So, like, the climbing over an obstacle, like, if we take off, yeah. And we want to clear an obstacle, we use the best, uh, I always get it mixed up, the best uh, rate of climb, and that gets us over shit the quickest. I see. That's 63 knots. Because we're going slower, we're going, uh, we're we're going up faster, back. right? Okay, and uh, aim to the right a little bit here. Okay. So, uh, you want to climb out quick at 63 knots, but that's not a very good 
angle to climb. You're using a shitload of fuel, you're straining the engine and everything else. So basically, as soon as you clear, clear your obstacle, you go to 79 knots, which is your best uh, rate, uh, best... Like your economical like said, point. Yeah, right? yeah, your VY. It's VX and VY. I could always get them confused. Um, but yeah, you, you climb at 79 um, until you get to a good altitude. But like I said, I like to climb at 90. So generally, like once I'm above 1,000, 2,000, kind of out of the way of the airport, yeah. I'll switch to 90 knots, and that will still keep me climbing at 500 feet per minute, and it will let me see over more, and we're going faster to get to our destination faster. The engine isn't being used as hard. We're not burning as much gas. It's all those all those benefits. So. Gotcha. Starcast, Rachel, I got the 63 Bravo kilos established. And uh, do me a favor, cross the the red line or the pink line just to the right, not abruptly, but just go to the right side of it. Got it. That's going to lead us to the center of the airport. We want to do a left U-turn to get to the airport, so. Tricky 63 Mike, radar search terminus. Oh, I'm going to do just to change approved today. Roger, good day, 63 Mike. Air Park traffic, Cherokee 63 Mike is 10 miles to the west southwest, inbound for a full stop landing. If somebody can advise on winds, that would be great, but most likely 25 63 Mike, Lodi. Uh, nobody's probably going to be flying, so. And then as soon as we're across the line, maybe like a little bit past it, like a, a wing width, then uh, turn left and parallel it. Got it. inversion layer going on. It's our top of descent marker. So basically what happens now is it goes, okay, we're at 2,500 feet. And I've told it I want to be at pattern altitude two, uh, two or three miles from the airport. So right now, if we descend at 500 feet a minute, that's going to put us at 1,000 feet, or excuse me, I think pattern's 800 feet. Um, it says 1,000, but it, pattern's actually 800 there, um, feet above the airport. Um, and put us at, a, at the right altitude. So we'll go ahead and descend to 2,500 RPM. And we'll turn left just a hair now. Perfect. And then just parallel that pink line in. Then we're going to push the yoke forward and we're going to make that go down to the 5, the vertical speed. We're going to make it go down at 500 feet. I can't talk. Down at 500 feet per minute. Down to the 5. Exactly. All right. Right there. It's a trend instrument, so it will tend to I see. tag. Yeah. And so our airport, I think that's it there. What? Uh, it's going to be hard for me to point out to you, but there's, I see the cluster of buildings here with the light grass? Right, kind of the roadway, oh. and then there's a cluster of buildings oh, that's I cut out so. in the grass. And then right past there, there's a brown, like a brown with a green kind of wedged in between it. Yeah. I think the runway is that next brown strip there because the uh, uh, airport businesses or whatever are off the side of that thing. So gotcha. actually, yeah, it could be. Actually, it could be. I don't know, we'll have to see. I don't know. I think it kind of looks like a runway, but I'm I think based on our GPS, it's going to be that one over there. So, okay. Pull this up for a little bit better of a view. I think that's right there. It's going to be just off now. It's going to be just off to our left, so it should be that over there. That's it. The long strip that's cut out. Yeah. It's going to be it. You want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it. Lodi Air Park Traffic, Cherokee 2863, Mike 1,800, three and a half miles to the west, inbound for a full stop, most likely 25. Lodi. Here it's no man's land. Everybody's kind of off in their own world, and uh, we just talk out loud, and everybody kind of coordinates with each other. So That's why there's no control tower, right? Correct, yeah. And so the other thing we can do is we can look for wind indicators. So do you see any smoke or... Anything like that? Field moving? Any Anything like that? Oh. All right, cool. There's another airport here, just to, so we're aware. It's a 
retarded that this one's on a different frequency than here, gotcha. but this one's on the same frequency as the other Lodi airport. They should have put these fucking two ones together. Dumb, but so that plane's taking off. I'm gonna take a picture. <laughs> He's taking off that way, so that's kind of a reassuring factor that... Be away from me, yeah. I don't see a windsock off the top of my head, but... Lodi, your park traffic, Cherokee 6-3, Mike is a left downwind for 2-5, Lodi. Alright. So our landing checklist is... Gumps, so we have gas. Fuel pump is on. Fuel is on the right tank. Two is undercarriage. Uh, our landing gear is hopefully still attached and down and fixed. Uh, M is, um, I forget what M is. Uh, sure is full rich. Uh, P is propeller. We have a fixed pitch propeller, so we're good. And S is um, seat belts and switches. So our seat belts are secure. Our seats are up and all the switches that we need are on. All right. We have 1,500 RPM here, notch of flaps. And when we're about 45 degrees to the runway, we're going to make our uh, base turn. Oh, right about here, we'll pull the second notch of flaps. Lodi, air park, Cherokee 63, Mike, left base 25, Lodi. No, it was the, the part in the flight sim where I had to land that I always crap. <laughs> well, that's why I'm landing today night. <laughs> And I do feel, see how we kind of feel like we're blowing out a little bit here? Yeah. So that's reassuring to me landing this direction as well. Gotcha. Even think about that in the sun. What's that? Even think about the, how you land into the sun. I'm not really concerned with the sun, I'm more concerned with wind. Yeah. All right, we are going to have to nail this approach. Lodi, air park traffic, Cherokee 63, Mike, final 25, Lodi. Hey, cows. All right, don't talk for me. get much smoother than that. That was awesome, man. Such a small craft, I was surprised. Yeah. Uh, Lodi traffic, Cherokee 63 Mike is back taxiing to the approach end of 25, Lodi. get it, so if somebody was trying to come in, they'd hear you exact back taxi. Well, hopefully in theory. Can <laughs> we open? Yeah. yeah, just make sure you grab onto it, because we're going to have a tailwind. Okay, you got it. If anything. Yeah, perfect. And look, our windsock was just right. Right down the runway, and... Uh, well, ish. Wow. Like I said, it was going to be either north or, or straight on, but it was pretty... Dark down the runway. Is that your relative? I think so. That's probably oh, my dad. To sell at CS Land. It was probably, uh. But what surprised me is, you know, with the small craft, I always thought it's almost like it's lighter touching down than, like, a big commercial oh, plane. And a lot of it's skill, but. <laughs> I just flattered the fuck out of you. Yeah. I feel bad now. You have a small cock. <laughs> it. Well, we know that's a lie. That's got to be their video. Either that or it's FAA because they're videotaping. So <laughs> That's my dad, too. dude. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Ever have plane spotters? Uh, do I have? What do you mean? Like, you know, people that like fucking love airplanes. Oh, yeah, there's, they come down to the airport all the time. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so first of all, we go one, we have a uh, .6 on the clock. Yeah. Turn off avionics. 